<sighs> and another day at the Abbey begins. I wonder what today has in store for us. Don't tell me. Red Skull's plans for Wondegore Monorail. Close. Red Skull dug them back in World War II, but where they go, well, we're not sure. Yet. There are some hints in Crossbones data that a few of the tunnels might even be older. How much do we trust Crossbones data? I trust it enough to investigate and launch reconnaissance. Up for a little smash and grab, Logan? Ah, uh, I see where this is going. It's a cannonball special. Except that you're throwing me at a whole mountain. We know you're strong enough to take it. Want in on the action, Steve? Negative. I need to poke around Crossbones hard drive. There's still encryption I can't crack. Maybe it's spicy love letters from Crossbones to Sin? She's Red Skull's daughter or granddaughter or something. Anyone sharing a family tree with Red Skull is bad news. Dating Crossbones is proof of that pudding. That's right. I wonder what kind of murder sonnets those two deranged lovebirds wrote to each other. But while it would make some titillating nightmare fuel, we have bigger fish to fry. And it's a big old doozy of a fish. Something called Project Gottmorder. Based on my limited German, that sounds promising. Agreed. Only it could be nothing. Red Skull dulled out fancy names left and right. I think the answer's here, in Crossbones' data. What we do know is that these tunnels go somewhere. And Hydra's hiding something. Something potentially big. Well, that's more context than I normally get for potential suicide missions. Into the Hydra nest we go. Huh. Oh, well, I suppose it's decided then. If we're really going into those tunnels underneath Mount Wondagore, get ready for some good old-fashioned grime and slime. Are you saying the Red Skull did not value comfort? The guy was a Nazi whose head was the color of an inflamed big toe. I doubt he was trucking in lacy throw pillows down there. I will adjust right. my expectations. The map we have is pretty loose, but luckily, you're gonna have me leading the way. So don't worry about getting stuck or lost. Alright. If you are confident you know where to go, then I will be right there beside you. Smart, Hunter. Real smart. Trust me and we'll get in and out of there before Hydra knows what's up. With any luck, we will learn the Skull's secrets quickly. Yeah. It'll be good to see what the old Bonehead was up to. You talk as though you knew him. It's not like we traded punches or anything, but I was in Canadian intelligence during the war. The Skull was definitely on our radar. As mm. nasty as you'd expect. Obsessed with the occult. And this Project Gottmorder? That's new to me. Hopefully it lives up to its name. I'd hate to go all the way down there and find out it's just a regular old mortar. Nice. I'm sure that it'll be worthwhile. Something tells me whatever we find down there will be worth the effort. Oh yeah, what's telling you that? Voices in your head? Pure in My gut. Whatever it is, I hope we can get it out of there. I don't want to spend more time in those tunnels than I have to. On that, we can agree. Yeah. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. I tell you, sure. there's nothing better than a bunch of spooky... Hey, can I ask a favor? Sure, man, you got it. Demons, there we go. Fun. Yeah. Should be fun. Hunter, you're headed into unsecured tunnels beneath Mount Wondagore with Wolverine as your guide. I yeah. understand if you've got some worries. No. I have full faith in Wolverine, and I can handle myself. We will be fine, no matter what we find in those tunnels. That is some A-plus courage you're displaying, Hunter. You and Logan will make us all proud. What was Logan saying about someone named Sin? Ah, uh, yes. She's a member of Red Skull's family. I've tangled with her a few times. I see. She's a 
Chip off the old block. Minus the giant red skull, of course. Mm -hmm. Do you think she knows about this Project Gutmorder? I have no doubts. I caught her trying to raid a museum for some of Red Skull's artifacts. Oh. If Crossbones was going to give his intel to anyone besides Lilith, it would have been her. But right. he did not. He gave it to you. Right. And that leaves us little choice. If we don't mm. find this Project Gutmorder, it's only a matter of time before Sin does. Good luck out there. Right. We can't have that. Um, what's going on here? I'm a bit out of sorts. I don't have anything to do at the moment. Am I actually having a bit of downtime? Seems like it. I don't know what to do with myself. You need something to keep your hands occupied. Some kind of hobby. Well, I am a pretty good cook when I have the time. Putting ingredients in a pot isn't much different than casting a spell. Just do not confuse the two. Truer than you might think. Someday I will have to tell you the horrific tale of my last souffle. I barely escaped with my life. I do not oh, think dear. I'll have to wait long for some other crisis to appear. Yes, I think you are right. I should cherish this time while I have it. For the moment, I will just... be. Hmm. Well. G good luck. Need to unburden, Hunter? Luck with that. Alright. Time for another little counter-attack. forces in this area are causing trouble. Let's take them down. I see what you're talking about. Here we go. Anyway, it can't be enough. Here we go. 
Just what we're looking for. This should be good. Okay, that was awesome. Until we need it. Oh, Hydra has good insurance. There we go. Don't mind if I do. These Cretans can't hope to stop you. Just say. Hmm. Very interesting. You don't see me running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still got some time. Tear them to shreds. Mm-hmm. And make this party more lively. Wouldn't you agree? There you are, friend. You've been sorely missed. Don't mind if I do. Or is this... Hmm. It costs two heroism. You should keep that in mind. That's more like it. Oh, sometimes I wish I had a cool staff like that. Away with you. Maybe put some ice on that. You'll feel better. All right, let's keep this winning streak going. Oh. 
We can only call the alarm once per turn, I guess. Okay. Or maybe twice. Alright. I see how it is. We call the alarm now. There we go. Time is almost up. Do as much as you can. Roger that. Don't let up. The more you take down here, the less we have to deal with later. Mm-hmm. Okay, still no uh still no card carriers, but oh well. Let's give this a try. Eighty percent, come on. Uh, there we go. And pop goes the weasel. Hmm. This is quite the pos position to be in. Close enough. Oh! There's a little doggy here. Did not notice him at all. Here we go. Should help. Perfect. Do what exactly? Uh oh. No, it's barricaded. Hmm. Here's an idea. Maybe? Might be... Nope. I'm on it. Perfect. Uh... And that's it, I'm afraid. Unless... Can do this. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, well, we did our we did our best. Enemies defeated twenty five. It's good enough. Excellent work. All right, though. All right, though. Another, another job well done. Um. Hello. Coming to book club tonight? 
Oh, sure. Meet you there. After you. Alright, it's been a while. Oh, and Logan is there too. Uh, Alright, let me just quickly... Uh, I'm gonna pretend that was an accident. Read this. The Mantle of Authority by General, General Chester Phillips, U.S. Army, retired. Chapter 4, excerpt. As I have shown in previous chapters, General Custer did not just lead from the front, but from the tip of the spear. This relentless glory-seeking has no place in today's army, of course, nor waging war upon a civilian populace. His recklessness doomed his soldiers. General Washington led from the top. Nevertheless, applying a, classical, a classic hierarchical structure to a volunteer army creates its own difficulties. Only General Washington's personal engagement with his subordinates combined with the home ground focus of the Continental Army allowed for his success. How can we explain the leadership style of Captain Steve Rogers? Yes, he did personally engage in combat with the enemy, but never for personal glory. Countless after-action reports show Captain Rogers reinforcing a wavering battle line for, or leading a stalled push to inspire his fellow soldiers. On longer duration assignments involving bat battalion command, Captain Rogers directed his soldiers from the center. Trust in his soldiers and encouraging, encouraging some autonomy allowed elements to operate independently, while still working toward the battalion's overall goal. It is my firm belief that this form of leadership is not limited to Captain Rogers, but can be replicated in government, military, or private industry. Hmm, interesting. Hunter. Yeah. Welcome to Hello. the club. Yeah, okay. Okay. I didn't realize Steve knew the author. I really Me neither. read this when he first asked. Yeah. Oh. You have not set anything on fire today, have you? <laughs> if you haven't already, you should welcome Logan. Whenever I did. I read this book, I can still hear the general's voice in my head. Hope these meetings don't run too long. Ready to kick this off? Yeah. I am ready. Before we start, I want to welcome Logan to the book club. What did you think of the book? I uh, didn't read it. Okay then. Oh. Guess I'll start. Steve, I really enjoyed this book. What stood out to you? I know people have different approaches to leading others, but I never considered what drives them to do so. Take Custer. He led from the front and was mostly loved by his troops, but his drive for personal glory affected every choice he made. Eventually, Custer picked a fight he couldn't handle. His recklessness led to the death of himself and every soldier he commanded. Right. His mistake was making decisions to elevate his own standing instead of his troops. Makes sense. The better they do, the more he gets credit for leading them to victory. I think the biggest right. lesson, beyond don't be Custer, is that an outsized ego is a double-edged sword for a leader. Also, you can't just get through life with a pretty face. I thought you didn't read the book. I didn't. But I picked things up from context. I learned more about George Washington from this book than anything I was taught in school. Yeah, that surprised me as well. Before this, I associated him with statues, paintings, and the dustiest parts of American history. But here we see a military leader whose personal ambition was the victory of his army. He was clear-eyed about his goals and knew how to get out of his own way. Washington led from the top. Though he kept counsel with various advisors, once he made a decision, he expected his subordinates to follow his orders. Mm. This George Washington reminds me of you. 
You'd better not say it's the hair. No, you keep counsel at Central. Once you make up your mind, you assign missions to the rest of us. Huh. Leads like George Washington. I'll take it. More than anyone else in the book, Washington believed true leadership is a contract bestowed upon you by those whom you lead. And that's where the book gets its title? Right. The mantle of authority. It's something that augments you. Which brings us to our final profile. We really don't have to do this one. And now, I'm interested. Steve, how long have you bugged me to read this? Not because of the chapter on me. You all know General Phillips selected me for the Super Soldier program. For a time, he commanded me in the field, and that's why my profile is in the book. He was kind to say I led by example. Maybe that's how it used to be. But the Avengers isn't a military organization. If I gave Tony an order, he'd laugh in my face. To get anything done, I need the group's consensus. I can't give pretty speeches about the need to sacrifice. I have to show that putting in the effort today will make a better tomorrow. It cannot be as simple as you make it sound. Oh, it never is. It's a constant struggle. And you won't always see eye to eye. Still, I find it's absolutely worth the effort. Leadership you can gain, but trust, that you have to earn. But I find little enjoyment in talking about myself, so... Yeah, let's end it here. All right, All right. We'll call it here. Next month is... Hunter, do you have any books to suggest? None for huh? the past few uh, centuries. Not really. Then Logan could pick the next one. Sure. The Adventures of Crash Morgan Number 5. The Last Queen of Deimos. What is that exactly? Mm. It's about a space explorer with a ray gun, a jetpack, and a fishbowl helmet. Travels through space with a robot dog. They get in wacky adventures. That's a classic. A buddy of mine had that in basic. I'm always up for space nonsense. I'm not, but that's the book. I'll give it a shot. Alright. That's a plan, then. I'm not sure why Logan joined Book Club if he's not going to read the books. You are not required to do so. Come on. It's the principle. Yeah, but... Well... I think you're right. I'm actually surprised Steve recommended this book. Why? Why? Steve can take a compliment, but he's uncomfortable with praise, especially from someone he respects. Hmm. Let's see. What did you think? Well, the punch is decent, but there should have been a bigger spread. What well, I meant, what did you think about book club? I just told you. Thumbs up for punch, thumbs down for snacks. Uh-huh. All right, then. Well, at least Logan showed up. He yeah. He didn't think he would. I wasn't sure he'd be in the book club. And I don't know what to expect from that book of his. You never know. The name alone has me intrigued. Hmm, maybe you're right. I should learn to roll with the unexpected. All right. You welcomed a resurrected demon slayer into your life. Now we read books together. Can't argue with that. When you first joined, I wanted you to keep an open mind about book club. I owe Logan the same courtesy you showed me. Good call. On your way out? Uh, yeah. I'm taking off. Good meeting. Yep. Ooh. Got some new abilities, too. Um. The best defense. Eh. Uh, don't need either of those, but. Oh, well. Alright, well. I suppose it's time I got some rest.